Hi guys and welcome to another video here at the Dad Vibes. Today we're going to be talking all about discipline. So we're going to be looking at traditional discipline versus positive discipline. Now there's no question that our little ones certainly test our patience and push their boundaries but how best do we respond certainly as fathers? Do we respond more traditionally where we've maybe asked our little ones to sit on a naughty step or stand in the corner and think about what they've done or do we respond positively that can often be seen as permissive where we respond calmly, be present and be responsive to their needs in that moment. So it's definitely time to get dads talking all about discipline, so let's dive straight into the video. So before we kick off, welcome to the Dad Vibes, and the Dad Vibes is all about getting dads talking about positive and responsive parenting. So this is a new channel, but I'm going to be covering everything from meltdowns to baby sleep to co-sleeping to breastfeeding, everything that traditionally dads haven't really discussed, I'm going to try and get dads talking about openly. This channel's for all parents, so be sure to hit subscribe and tune into the weekly videos throughout 2021. Let's take a little look at what traditional and positive discipline actually means. So maybe your child has hit an emotional wall and they've become overwhelmed or overstimulated, or maybe they're trying to change their behavior and they're acting in a way that hopefully can manipulate you into buying them a toy or a cookie or some chocolate. Now, I guess more traditionally, we've seen this behavior as naughty, so we respond accordingly. That could involve asking the child to sit on a naughty step, to stand in the corner and to generally put the onus on the child, get them to think about what they've done and get them to work it out for themselves and get them to change their behaviour. And then from a more positive point of view it's appreciating our little ones are little human beings continually processing huge emotions that they aren't able to really regulate by themselves at such a young age and responding in a positive way. Now this can certainly be seen as permissive, maybe it can be seen as you're letting your child get away with their misbehavior, but as we'll talk about here, that really isn't the case. And it's just putting the onus on us as parents to be calm, present and responsive in those tougher moments for our little ones. Now there are two types of tantrums. I won't dive into the science in this video, but I'd highly recommend reading The Whole Brain Child by Daniel Siegel and Tina Bryson. Now essentially a tantrum can occur because our child is aware of their behavior. They change their behavior to tr try and maybe manipulate the parent into achieving something that they want. Now that in itself requires one response, but also there are meltdowns that can occur when our little ones have hit an emotional wall. Now maybe they've become overstimulated, maybe they've become tired, hungry, angry, frustrated, overwhelmed. There's a whole host of reasons why our child can have a meltdown. Now it's really important as parents to try and remember that certainly at the younger age when these occur, 18 months, two years old and so on, our child hasn't really developed the ability to regulate their own emotion. So when they're experiencing these moments, asking them to stand in a corner, sit on a naughty step and putting the onus on the child doesn't really work because all we're really doing in that moment is making the child feel insecure, putting anxiety on the child for something they're not really able or capable of doing at this age. People have reached out to me and have said, you know, traditional discipline does work. If we tell our child to sit on a naughty step and think about what they've been doing, then, you know, their behavior changed. And certainly it does achieve a short term change in behavior. But we do need to think as parents, what does suppressing their emotion achieve long term? Does it enable them to learn and develop and grow? Or does it encourage them to suppress their emotions? And I'm really interested to see what you guys think, because all I'm doing here is opening up the conversation. So do let me know in the comments below which approach you prefer. So let's take a little step back and have a look at the traditional approach. So let's take an 18 month old who's having a meltdown because you serve them peas and they really didn't want peas, or maybe they're annoyed because their peas are actually green and they want them to be red. Now they have the biggest meltdown and our solution is to isolate them, to make them stand in the corner, to think about how naughty they've been and to then come back when they're ready to eat their peas. 
So what we've done here is we've asked them to stand in a corner. We've completely cut off the emotional outburst, maybe encourage them to suppress their emotion. And when they're in the corner, thinking about what they've done, they've come back, maybe they do eat the pea, but are they eating the pea because they've learned and developed and grown as a human being, or are they doing it out of fear because they want to please you as their parent? I'm just opening the discussion and getting dads talking about these things. So it's certainly something to consider and something to be mindful when we're making these parenting decisions. So the biggest thing for me and that I cling on to when I certainly read parenting books and interact with my little one is the suppressing of emotion. Now this is so important and we're seeing this worldwide today as you know mental health issues uh, rife certainly in young men and we need to encourage our little ones that showing their emotions is okay. What's really important to remember, and there's no question about this, is that childhood experiences are everything. The way we interact with our little ones, the way we make them feel about themselves is so important and lasts right through toddlerhood into those teenage years and into adulthood. There's no question about this. So it's so important to make our little ones feel secure and comfortable in showing their emotions. So if we look at the positive approach, let's take the same scenario. Our 18 month old is having a meltdown because we've served them peas. Now obviously we want our little one to eat the peas, but it's important to allow them to be unhappy if they want to be unhappy allow them to know it's okay to show their emotion. You know, there are gonna be things our little ones aren't happy about and that's okay. And by being calm, present and responsive, that could look different for all types of parents. Some children might want to be hugged, for example. Some children will, might hate being hugged and might need their own space. And in fact, you could reframe a naughty step, for example, into a calming corner where you and your child go together to help regulate the um, meltdown and the emotional outburst. And once they've settled and come through it, and then is a great time to engage and talk to them. And as a parent, by being calm, present and responsive, we're able to work through the meltdown with our child and help model emotional regulation with them and use these opportunities as learning opportunities because that's a great thing to remember that meltdowns and tantrums are a fantastic opportunity for our little ones to learn grow and for us to model emotional regulation with them you know i think once parents grasp the concept that you know our little ones often can't regulate their own emotions certainly in those younger years that there is only really one way to respond and that's with positivity because we can't punish a little one for something they're not capable of doing yet. Yes, they're going to get frustrated because you've served them peas. Yes, they're going to get frustrated because they don't want to wear their coat. They don't want to have a bath. They don't want to get in the car seat. These hurdles are going to have to be jumped over all day, every day. And I think as a parent, by understanding um, this basic concept, it makes life so much less stressful doesn't make it easier um, because these things are difficult you know you just want to get out the door but you've got to battle the socks the trousers the shoes the coat the gloves but just gaining a, an understanding of this concept really does help lower stress certainly as us as parents and by lowering our stress that will certainly stop situations with our little ones escalating because if our little ones stressed and we're stressed situations can just blow up really quickly. If you're enjoying this video so far guys please hit subscribe, please hit like and also leave me a comment, introduce yourself and let me know how you approach these tough situations. Now, obviously as our little ones get older you know they're going to become more aware of their behaviour and they are going to do things that is slightly more manipulative to get what they want. So it's definitely on the parent here to meet it with firm boundaries. You know, you can have consequences, you can have firm boundaries because boundaries certainly allow a child to feel safe and they allow a child to learn and develop. Being positive certainly isn't about being permissive and I think that's one of the biggest misconceptions. Certainly when I share my content, I think people associate positivity with permissiveness and it isn't about that at all. You know, as our children grow, there are going to be boundaries and there are going to be consequences. But as a parent, continuing to be present and responsive and not withdrawing our love based on their behaviour certainly will help with our child's self-esteem. It will help with the way they think about themselves, help with them feeling secure and reducing stress and anxiety for sure. I think it's really important to remember that continuing to be calm, present and responsive, not all of the time, you know, parenting's tough, it's not gonna happen all of the time, but being mindful of this really does help. Continuing to be present, calm and responsive 
helps create the foundation for communication with our little one right from those early ages. And as parents continuing to be compassionate allows our children to be compassionate themselves, it allows them to learn emotional regulation, and above all, it allows them to become comfortable with showing their emotions, because the number one thing we shouldn't be doing is suppressing emotions in our little toddlers. Big thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video and made it this far, hit like, hit subscribe. Throughout 2021, I'll be posting videos all about parenting every single week with the aim to just get dads talking about topics traditionally they haven't really discussed.